Mr. Brock. And now I'd like to say something about Brexit. If you want to uh, agree on things with us, you have to finance those commitments. That's a completely normal way to proceed. And I believe that you have to recognize that the EU is not a golf club that you can simply leave. But you have taken on commitments, commitments for the citizens in your country and our countries. And those commitments have to be shouldered and then we'll be prepared to engage in fair negotiations. One minute. Uh, let me remind you, General, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that I was against Brexit. Mr. Brock, you mentioned that term golf club. Let me also remind you that the European Union was, from the viewpoint of the British, once a football club. And if the management of the club changes the football club to a golf club, then I wonder who has left really whom. I think it is time that we also criticize the negotiation strategy of the Commission and the Council. It is illogical, it is dangerous, and I think it is unfair. It is illogical because the EU insists on a financial offer by the British government before an agreement of trade. I just wonder, Herr Juncker, would you ever agree on a price for something you don't know what you buy for? It is dangerous because everybody here agrees that peace in Ireland must be preserved at all cost. Well, nowhere in the world is there a border arrangement without a trade or customs arrangement. How will you ever get such an agreement without a negotiations on trade? And finally, it is grossly unfair. Mr. Tusk, you mentioned many times European values. Let me remind you of the fact that democracy, freedom of press, human rights are not European values. They are universal values. And I would like to also remind you that we have something like British values, and that is fairness. And it is about time that you recognize fairness as a European value. Mr. Henkel, Mr. Brock has a question. You will accept? Herr Henkel? Yeah, thank you. Herr Brock. Very. Mr. Enkel, now I don't want to know from you who's being fair in their negotiation, but every development from the EU, from the Single Act, from Maastricht, from Nice, from Amsterdam and the Lisbon Treaty has been ratified with a qualified majority in the House of Commons. So you cannot say anything has been imposed. They've been involved in the negotiations and they've decided it in their parliament. So uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, the British uh, entered the European Union under three conditions. Subsidiarity, self-responsibility of a country's debts, and competition. All three factors you find in the Lisbon Agreement. In the course of various tries and uh, uh, attempts to save the euro, these three principles have been grossly violated. And that led to a continuous centralization and bureaucratization of the European Union. And that finally contributed to Brexit. Honorable Henkel. Mr. Henkel. Thank you. Well, I would like to make it very clear from the beginning. I was against Brexit. And Mr. Gonzalez Pons made the point that uh, after Brexit, people like Farage are leaving this parliament. Well, I would like to remind you, not only him, but all British people are leaving this parliament. And these are the last advocates in this parliament who are in favor of competitiveness, of decentralization, and of self-responsibility of a country for its debts. But it was, and let's not forget it, it was the Junkers, it was the Brocks, it was the Verhofstadts in this parliament who carry a lot of responsibility for the Brexit in the first place. It was their mantra for more Europe, more centralization, more socialization, which led to the referendum in the first place. And it was their inflexibility on the immigration issue which gave the arguments for the Johnsons and the Farages to swing the results towards Brexit. To minimize the damage, we now need to do three things. First of all, Mr. Verhofstadt, people like you should stop this arrogance vis-à-vis -vis the British voters. 
Secondly, Mr. Barnier, you should stop giving the impression that you want to punish the British for their decision. And here's a message to London. They should really get their act together and come up with a stable and unified government to face this commission in this critical phase. La parola.